Gabriella Cavallin, the ex-girlfriend of Manchester United winger Antony, is set to be interviewed by detectives in the UK next week over her assault claims against the Brazilian footballer. The Mirror report that Cavallin will fly to the UK next week to elaborate on her claims that the Man United winger assaulted her on four separate occasions between June 2022 and May this year. Two of the alleged incidents are claimed to have taken place in the UK, with both British and Brazilian police investigating the 22-year-old's accusations against her former partner. Having been in Brazil since the beginning of September, Antony flew back to the UK as he looks to clear his name with the Greater Manchester Police, the people's person reported yesterday. Antony confirmed that he is ready to fully cooperate with the police in an effort to prove his innocence and see the charges against him dropped. According to The Sun, the 23-year-old is prepared to answer any questions that the police may have for him as well as hand over any device, including his mobile phone. Brazilian police cleared Antony to travel to the UK after he was deemed to have fully cooperated with them. They added that they do not require any further information from the player. Following the release of assault allegations by Cavallin and two other women, United decided by way of a mutual agreement with the player that Antony would not return to the club until further notice. Antony has also been excluded by Brazil from their upcoming World Cup qualifiers. Since the allegations against Antony surfaced, one of the three women accusing him of assault has decided to drop her case against the player. The United winger has also appeared on Brazilian television in an attempt to defend himself against the accusations. Manchester United manager Eric Ten Hag will hope that after his side's narrow win over Burnley on Saturday, he's slowly starting to win the battle for results in the Premier League this season. Off the pitch, however, the Dutchman is still fighting his war against what he believes is falling levels of professionalism at Old Trafford. Speaking after his decision to exile Jaden Sancho from the first-team squad following their public rift, merely his latest head-to-head -head clash with a player, Ten Hag said he inherited a squad with no good culture when he took over at the club in the summer of 2022. His treatment of Sancho, following on from disciplinary measures handed down to Cristiano Ronaldo, Marcus Rashford, and Alejandro Garnacho, has become an exercise in showing the England forward who's boss and he won't be allowed back until he apologizes. The message to everyone else? Don't mess with the manager. Navigation Toggle ESPN. Inside Ten Hag's battle to control Man United dressing room. Should Ten Hag stick with Man UTD's winning backup Al Waladen? Janusz Michalik wonders whether Eric Ten Hag saw enough in the side that beat Crystal Palace to hand them a start in the league. Manchester United manager Eric Ten Hag will hope that after his side's narrow win over Burnley on Saturday, he's slowly starting to win the battle for results in the Premier League this season. Off the pitch, however, the Dutchman is still fighting his war against what he believes is falling levels of professionalism at Old Trafford. Speaking after his decision to exile Jadon Sancho from the first-team squad following their public rift, merely his latest head-to-head -head clash with a player, Ten Hag said he inherited a squad with no good culture when he took over at the club in the summer of 2022. His treatment of Sancho, following on from disciplinary measures handed down to Cristiano Ronaldo, Marcus Rashford, and Alejandro Garnacho, has become an exercise in showing the England forward who's boss, and he won't be allowed back until he apologizes. The message to everyone else? Don't mess with the manager. Inverted fullbacks appear to be the in thing across the Premier League these days, and Manchester United might have their own answer to that revolutionary tactical approach. Pep Guardiola and Manchester City have been forerunners in that particular area, with John Stones, Kyle Walker, and promising academy graduate Rico Lewis performing so well in the hybrid position last season. Joao Cancelo before them had carved out a reputation as one of the best around before falling out of favor. Of course, the treble winners are by no means the only European club to try and create overloads by sacrificing a defensive player when in possession. However, given how much City control the ball in each and every game, that door is often left wide open for Stones to push on. Stones being sidelined with injury so far this season has forced Guardiola into a momentary rethink, but their top-flight rivals such as Arsenal and Liverpool have experimented with a similar approach themselves with England star Trent Alexander-Arnold and Oleksandr Zinchenko respectively. Manchester United looks set to welcome three more first-team players as the club's injury crisis seems to finally be coming to an end.
The Red Devils dismantled Crystal Palace at Old Trafford on Tuesday, partly thanks to four players who were injured for Manchester United, returning in a welcomed boost for Eric Ten Hag. Well, it has now emerged that three more players could be set to return to the team when the two sides meet each other once again on Saturday afternoon. Sergio Reguilon, Christian Eriksen, and Scott McTominay will undergo fitness tests in the hopes they could return to the side. Three players to return. McTominay and Eriksen are set to return to the side for the game this Saturday after missing Tuesday's game due to illness, according to the Manchester Evening News. Reguilon could also be back in the side for the game this weekend after being unavailable for the midweek game. The situation around the Spanish fullback has been a confusing one. The defender looked to have picked up a hamstring injury during the win at Turf Moor, but it now seems his absence on Tuesday was down to illness. Lisandro Martinez has been suffering with an injury in his right foot since he had to be replaced at the Emirates Stadium. He is not thought to be too far off. According to the report, the injury sustained by the Argentine defender is not thought to be serious, and he could be back in the United team soon. The return of Rafael Varane from injury leaves Ten Hag with four center backs to select from, and United have two more home games against Galatasaray and Brentford next week. It seems risky to bring in the former Ajax defender if he is suffering from injury, especially when the Red Devils seemingly have depth in that position for this weekend's game. Sofian Amrabat is confident Manchester United have the potential to achieve something big this season, and if he can play his part in a successful campaign, he hopes it will help turn his stay at Old Trafford into a permanent one. The 27-year-old turned down numerous offers from other clubs during the summer transfer window after setting his heart on a reunion with Eric Ten Hag, but he had to wait until deadline day for the deal to go through, and in the end, it was only a loan move. United paid Fiorentina £8.5 million to sign Amrabat on a season-long loan, with the option to make the move permanent for £21.4 million, but there is no guarantee that clause will be activated. The Morrican midfielder, who played under Ten Hag at FC Utrecht between 2015 and 2017, said the summer was very difficult as he waited for United to make their move, but refused to see the unexpected nature of the deal as being an audition to extend his stay at the club beyond one season. I don't think about that. For me today, I am a Manchester United player, said Amrabat. The only thing I can do is give everything that I have to do my best to try to help the team. I hope we have a fantastic season, I hope we can win something, and then later we will see what will happen. Of course, I would love to stay here, but that's not important for me. I don't look too far in the future. Ten Hag made Amrabat a key target early in the summer, but United couldn't sell the players they wanted to raise the funds to sign.